and welcome to the Homemade Podcast Sports. This is your host, J Pop. And welcome back to the Homemade Podcast of Sports with your host, Jay Pops. Guys, today's date is, hold on, today's date is September 29th, 2021. Please excuse me for that. Uh, do, 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 do I need to bleep that out? Wife, do I need to bleep that out? No, she said no, guys. I don't need to bleep that out. But anyways, listen here, man. Welcome back to the Homemade Podcast of Sports with your host, Jay Pops. Guys. We are officially in hashtag beat the heck out of Mississippi State Week. All right, that is a night game that's going to be on Saturday night at uh, 7 o'clock for the guys that did not know. This is what I will do. I will be in attendance, okay? Courtesy of my dear Aggie friend, uh, Mr. Jonathan uh, Simington, okay? Uh, he's invited me to come out and hang out with him out there at uh, Kyle Field. So I will be out there. All right. I would love to see all 900 and I think 52 of you guys that have subscribed to the podcast. I love that, by the way. Okay. So I would love to see you all. Once again, I will be down there in full effect with my Aggie gear on and ready to see uh, this number 15 ranked team beat the heck out of Mississippi State. All right. So, guys, let's get into that, man, because we're going to talk about a little bit of that. But before I get started, started and all the way into this is what I need to say to my Aggie family out there, all right? I just want to say this, man. First and foremost, I'm not going to change anything that I say, okay? I'm just not going to do that. Uh, if I said it already, then hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to say things that people want me to say, okay? My expectations are still high. The bar is still set high. Why? Because... This team wants us to set the bar high, okay? I do not have low expectations. I do not. Just because we lost one game to Arkansas does not mean that we're going to lose all other games against ranked opponents. You guys have to get that out of your head. I cannot stand seeing that because of the simple fact that you guys think that you should lower your expectations now. Man, that makes no sense to me. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this here. I'm going to tell you guys this. Because we're, we're wanting to be elite, okay? And we have the talent now to be elite. We have the talent to be amongst the elites. Do you think Oklahoma is lowering their expectations? Do you think Georgia lowers their expectations? Do you think Alabama lowers their expectations? Hell, do you even think LSU lowers their expectations? Clemson is another. These are the teams that are amongst the elite talents. Okay, do you guys think they lower expectations because they lost just one game? No, no, not at all. Regardless to how bad the quarterback may have played uh, on the big stage so far. All right. I would not lower expectations. You guys don't need to do so neither. All that, all that uh, bull crap about oh well i'm just being realistic how are you being realistic when the game haven't even been played yet how can you be realistic about that hmm how well because of what i because of what you guys have seen that we've only scored 10 points okay things will get better things will get things will get better i honestly believe that jimbo fisher will get it better and all of this drinking the kool-aid i don't know who made that slogan but I, I don't drink anybody's Kool-Aid. If, if it's not any Kool-Aid that I'm making on my wife, in which my wife makes good Kool-Aid, by the way. Thank you, wifey. Then I don't drink the Kool-Aid. What is drinking the Kool-Aid, man? Huh? I believe in Jimbo Fisher because of the simple fact of that I've seen Jimbo Fisher coach here and when he was at Florida State. He was a hell of a coach. I mean, he's still a hell of a coach. That will not change once again. The expectations aren't going anywhere. It is set high. Regardless to who our quarterback is right now. Okay, if we feel like, if Jim Fisher feels like he doesn't have the quarterback to do it, I honestly believe in him to change it up to the running game. Okay, I understand the offensive line hadn't been playing good as well right now. All right, but please keep in mind that this is their first, that was their first SEC game. 
Okay, that was the first SS, uh, SEC game. All of those guys that lost are frustrated just like we are. I know you're frustrated because I was frustrated. But I will apologize to you guys for uh, not understanding why you're frustrated. The reason why we're all frustrated in as well as this a &M football team is because we hadn't seen a loss in one year. When is the last time you can honestly say that about Texas a &M? Losing a football game in one year. We went on a one-year run, man. 11 straight games. 11. Tied for the longest winning, uh, no, was up there with one of the longest winning streaks in the country. Okay? Yes, we, we were right behind the team in Tuscaloosa, which is Alabama. We were right behind those guys for the second active longest winning streak. So I understand why you guys are frustrated. But you cannot say after losing one game that, okay, well, we're going to lose this one. We're going to lose that one. We're going to lose that one. Oh, that might just be the season now. Who does that? Who does that? No, man, no. I will not accept that. That is a losing mentality. These guys are winners. They don't like losing. We don't like losing. And I believe that us fans, of course, we have gotten used to winning. That's the see, and see, that's why I'm behind Jimbo Fisher so much is because he changed the culture. The culture wasn't winning. Now we're winning. We didn't got used to winning, and we ain't much win that win that many games. We ain't much win a full season of games. That's but that's how much we got used to winning, man. So I do understand that we just got so used to winning to where when it's a loss, it's just like, oh man, come on, man, really? We just lost that. I I love the culture that he's built, and these players have built that as well. They don't like losing. Do you think they will come? Do you think these guys, do you think these players are comfortable with losing? If you do think that, then you're crazy, man. You're, you're, you're really, really crazy. Those guys aren't comfortable. They want to win, man. That's, that's, that is what they signed up for, was winning. They signed up for wins and losses. They know that. But they were on a one-year winning streak. They're mad, man. They're mad behind that. That's why I love seeing the press conference afterwards. When the whole team said, yeah, man, we, did, we didn't take practice serious. All right? So, be looking for that next game. All right? Also, man, Zach Calzada. Uh, you guys remember Johnny Manziel? And no, I'm not trying to compare everybody to Johnny Manziel. But you guys remember Johnny Manziel? Johnny Manziel lost his first SEC game as well. Did Johnny get mad behind that? Yeah, he did. But Johnny knew that there were other games to play. And what did Johnny do? Johnny went and had a Heisman moment in, in one of the most hostile environments there could ever be in college football. Do you hear what I'm saying? He went into one of the most hostile environments, and to this day, they do not lose a game down there consistently at home. I think they've only lost maybe five home games under Nick Saban, I believe, or something like that. That's very crazy. In 12 years, 12 or 13 years, well, I think 14th year he's going on there, they have only lost five home games. All right, Johnny went down there, had a Heisman moment, came back, should have beat LSU. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. But Johnny didn't get mad because he lost his first SEC. That's, that's all I'm saying. Totally different team, I know that. But this team, that team was nowhere near as talented as this team. All right? You guys got to understand that nobody knew what Johnny had, but Johnny went and done it. That's what you guys have to remember. Things can be done. Think about Zach. Zach has to have his Heisman moment. It starts with Mississippi State. All right, then after that, we got the next game. And I'm, I'm so frustrated because I see everybody already marking that as a loss. Y'all have to stop that, man. That's, that's, that's what these guys want us to do. They want us to lower expectations. I'm talking about other guys out. They want us to lower the expectations and they want us to not be amongst the elite. Some do, some don't. But when you start lowering the expectations, then that's when you start to not become elite anymore. Now you're just settling in mediocrity. Okay? So, no, I won't, I won't settle with that. I told you, one loss, 
or undefeated. I'm sticking with that to the end. And I meant that. I meant that. I meant that. I believe Zach can and will get it right. He just has to go through the growing pains. And I believe he will have a Heisman moment against Mississippi State because, like I said, that is where it starts at. He will have his Heisman moment. Okay? And once again, I thank you guys for uh, standing with me. I thank you guys for that. But I'm drinking nobody's Kool-Aid. All right? Once again, I'm drinking nobody's Kool-Aid but my wife's. Thank you, wife, by the way. All right? Anywho, guys, let's keep on going here. So, let's talk a little bit about this Mississippi State. All right? And by this time, I know most of you guys probably turned off the podcast because you probably got mad. That's okay. You know, come on back for the next 10 minutes of the show so I can talk about Mississippi State. Come on back. Come on back. All right? We're a family, man. That's what you do. You talk to your family. You let them know how you feel. All right? So let's keep on going here. Let's keep on going. So, in the back, on the big screen, as you can see, some highlights for LSU, Mississippi State. All right? So let's talk about some things here. First and foremost, this Texas A&M defense, they went from ninth. They have dropped down from the ninth spot to the 22nd best defense in the nation. The thing about that, though, the thing about that, although they gave up those yards against Arkansas, you can best believe they will not give up those yards going forward. Okay? I don't care what you guys say, but they will not give up those yards going forward. This is the thing about it. They gave up all of those yards, but still managed to give up two touchdowns. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this once again for the people in the back. They gave up all those yards, but still managed to give up two touchdowns. Okay? So, as of right now, right now, this Texas a &M defense is ranked the uh, 22nd. I mean, uh, no, they're ranked 23rd. I'm sorry. 23rd best in the nation. They've only given up four touchdowns this year. That means one touchdown per game. They gave up two the last game, so that puts that four. But on the... Uh, Average scale, that's one touchdown per game. One touchdown in the field goal, you know, like stuff like that. But one touchdown per game. Once again, we've never went through four games in a season that I know of with only giving up, well, ever since we've been to SEC, and giving up only four touchdowns. That is the reason why my expectations are still way up there. Okay? Because of this defense. This defense can keep us in a lot of ball games. And this defense will keep us in a lot of ball games. Mississippi State is going to be one of them. My prediction score for this Mississippi State game is 21 to 3. Can they prove me wrong by scoring way more than 21 points? I think they can, but I'm going to give them 21 to 3 right now. Okay, that's that's a safe score bit. That's a safe score bit. 21 to 3, Texas AM at home, under the lights, in which is where. Zach, I believe, feels way more comfortable playing it. He feels way more comfortable playing at home. He does. That's just that. Uh, so, hey, you have to put that into an analytic uh, type of deal there and say, okay, well, they're playing at home. This, this is the reason why I'm giving them 21 points, okay? 21 to 3. Texas A&M, and this defense is just so fire, man. This defense has not stepped off the gas. They have not. All right? So the Mississippi State defense, they're ranked 43rd in the country. Mississippi State right now in four games have given up 10 touchdowns. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, they've given up 13 touchdowns. Once again, Mississippi State is ranked 43rd in the country. They have given up 13 touchdowns in total on the year. How many yards they have given up so far? Mississippi State has given up 323 yards a game. That is the reason why I'm saying 21 to 3. Okay? A lot of people don't think we can score that 21 points. Right now, I can already see them. Nah, y'all can't score 21. What are you talking about? That's fine. I highly... Believing otherwise, they can score 21 points, leave Mississippi uh, State at three. All right, so total offense wise, and this is another reason why everybody's so mad. Total offense, 
Texas A&M is 78. No, no, no. Texas A&M is number 70 in total offense. I have not seen that offense go all the way down to number 70 in a very long time. Hell, I don't think I've ever seen that ever since we've been to the SEC. But they are number 70 right now. Okay, so, yeah, we all know what's going on with that and why they're at number 70. That's fine. But once I, like I said, man, things will and can change, and it starts from Mississippi State. Okay? Uh, Mississippi State, they are 42nd in the country offensively. Uh, they have the 42nd best offense in the country. <clears throat> so, that's the reason, another reason why I said 21 to 3. I believe that they can get a big stop on Mississippi State. Now, the thing about that is that their defensive backs for Mississippi State, they're, they're actually pretty good. Uh, although I can sit up here and say, you know, hey, they've given up 13 touchdowns, but they're, they're, their defensive backs are pretty good out there. All right? Uh, we played them last year when the score was 28 to 10, but uh, their, their defensive backs played some good – good schemes out there and these are the same defensive backs that's coming back this year the same ones haven't anything changed uh i do believe that one of them may have gotten hurt though or something like that so he was out for the season but their their defensive backs are pretty good so i expect a challenge from that defensive back unit okay uh that's no if ands or buts about that but it can be points scored in this game it all depends on how the way the offense is going to run going forward. And see, this, this is the thing, too. Everybody looked at last year, and everybody looked at 2019 and just automatically assumed and felt like this was going to be a passing lead going forward. I, for one, I never believed in that. Although you do need to pass. I'm not saying that. You're going to need to pass the football. But I just don't believe in it. I believe that if you have a balanced offense, man, you are more dangerous than anything. Okay? You are more dangerous than anything with a balanced offense. The thing about it was that Jimbo Fisher ran a running offense last year. Like I say, and he was, a, he was just a tad bit ahead of his time. He was a tad bit ahead of his time. You can run the ball on this Mississippi State team at your own will. Okay, now those guys on the defensive line, they have been pretty good. They've been uh, creating havoc, you know, in that, uh, in that defensive line game. And I know since our offensive line is kind of pretty much of a challenge, uh, you know, it's a lot of people that are not taking that offensive line serious. So a lot of people think that their defensive line is just going to overhaul the offensive line. I just honestly think that if they can just hold up for just a little bit, this Texas A&M running game is going to run wild. They're going to run wild. Uh, once again, we are in conference play. It started with Arkansas. We lost that game. Now we're on the Mississippi State. Uh, and although they didn't run the ball, it's much in that Arkansas game, which is really kind of killing me. I believe that they can run this ball down Mississippi State's throat. Okay, because first and foremost, <clears throat> Mississippi State is already coming out with the mentality of stopping the passing game. Because nobody believes in the passing game. No team believes that we can pass the ball right now. And they, they have the right to think that you know, uh, rightfully so, because of what they've seen so far. So they do have the right to think that, hey, we can't pass football. Because what have they seen? You know, what what have they seen lately? You know what I mean? Please, God, excuse me for one second. Blue! Get from over there. I'm talking to my dog, y'all. Yeah. Guys, the dog got into it. I had to go and get, you know, I, I had to talk to the dog. Anywho, let's get back on this. But I believe that they can run it down Mississippi State's throat and they can constantly make Mississippi State play the run. This, this is not what they're ready for, okay? So you have to give them what they're not ready for, which is running the ball. I believe that we have a talented 
crew in that backfield. I still believe we have a talented offensive line. They just have not jailed. They have not jailed yet, okay? But I believe this offensive line can get in there and they can uh, push these guys back. They, uh, they can also, man, take – this offensive line can start being physical. It's just the mentality of being physical. And they, and they have the power to do it. They're just not doing it yet. They're just not doing it yet. Uh, and which is crazy to say, you know, we, we've given up 10 sacks. and has given up 10 sacks. But at least three of those sacks have come on the quarterback himself for just holding on to the football for too long. An offensive lineman cannot stand up that long and block for you. You have to at least either take off running or you have to just throw the football. What I believe Zach will do in this game, that's why I say the running game, I believe Zach will get a couple of zone replays thrown in there. A lot of people don't think Zach can run. Zach can actually run. He may not be as fast as King, but Zach can actually run. Okay, so I believe there will be a couple of zone reads mixed in there, but I also believe that Zach will put it into his mind, hey, man, I got to start running football. I, you have to. Also, Zach just has to come to a realization of that his receivers is better than the defensive backs they're going up against. I've said that before already. You have to put it into your mind that my receivers – are better than your DBs. And that's just that. And they actually are. He has to believe that Jaden Watermeyer is better than that linebacker that they have on him at the moment. All right. Uh, he has the Mon Demons out there. I do not know if Caleb Chapman is coming back. I don't believe so. Uh, Hezekiah Jones still injured. Uh, he may not come back until like middle of the season or something, or maybe like the Alabama game. Jalen Preston is out there now with you guys. Uh, in which I don't believe Chase Lane may be coming back right now. Uh, but these are the guys that are out. These are the guys that are out, man. They're out, okay? Uh, Anaya Smith is still there. Anaya Smith made some hell of a catches uh, in that last game. Build off that momentum. Keep going forward. Once again, I believe this defense will hold up. And, it's, uh, and because this defense gave up 17 points, in the first two quarters like that, I think they really, really, really teed them off, and they will not let that happen again. They won't let it happen again. I'm sorry. That's the reason why my expectations can still stay high with this team. I'm not shying away from that. All right, so 21-3 to three, uh, is my final score prediction against Mississippi State. All right, I heard a lot of people say that Mississippi State is going to score some points. Well, I think otherwise on this defense. I don't believe that this pass defense would give up that many passing yards. That's just me. I, I don't believe that. And I know what Mississippi State loves to do. They love to pass the football. All right. Uh, they'll mix in a little bit of run, but they ain't going to run it like that. 21-3 to 3 is my score prediction, and that's fine. Please, if you guys don't mind, leave your score prediction in the comments. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, and, hey, man, like I say, beat the heck out of Mississippi State week. 7 o'clock p.m. Mississippi State game. That game will be aired on SEC Network. All right? So, please, keep that in mind. Once again, I love all of you guys. Hashtag Geek Magus. Dope Sense.
And thank you guys for tuning in to the hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Please, guys, uh, subscribe to the YouTube page and also follow me on Twitter at JPops, on Instagram at JPops, and also on Facebook at hashtag Homemade Podcast Sports. Thank you guys once again. Hashtag is Madness.